When the Germans surrendered in May 1945, the reputation of its armed forces was heavily tainted by war crimes. Though the German army thought that it had fought valiantly and often honourably, the same could not be said of the Waffen-SS and SS police units. In the years after the surrender, a convenient myth began to emerge in Germany, whereby an attempt was made to differentiate between the professionalism of the army and the murderous activities of Hitler's political soldiers, the SS. The latter organisation had a well-earned reputation for battlefield prowess, proving to be among the hardest and most capable of German soldiers, but it was no secret that frontline Waffen-SS units had readily massacred prisoners of war and civilians in innumerable atrocities, from Belgium and France in 1940, through the Eastern Front campaign and on into Normandy and later the Ardennes Offensive. On the back of these facts grew the myth of the clean Wehrmacht in post-war Germany. The Waffen-SS and the security police apparatus of Himmler's empire were blamed for all of the terrible acts committed in the war by German troops. But the only problem with the clean Wehrmacht myth was the fact that it was a myth. The regular German army's hands were as stained with blood as those of their Waffen-SS colleagues. Historians provided evidence of appalling massacres and acts of cruelty perpetrated by army and air force units throughout World War II, from the murder of Cretan civilians by elite paratroopers, to the huge mistreatment and executions of Soviet prisoners of war, to the shooting of hostages in France and Italy and elsewhere, and the assistance regular army and air force units often gave to SS police units in rounding up Jews. But there was one theatre that did seem to be immune from criminality. North Africa. The Africa Corps and its respected commander, Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, emerged from World War II with their reputations intact. Indeed, Rommel, forced to kill himself because of his alleged support for getting rid of Hitler, became a martyr, the only World War II German general today celebrated and honoured in Germany. The desert conflict was termed war without hate by British journalists, a gentleman's war where both sides scrupulously observed the Geneva Convention and showed mercy and respect to each other. Unfortunately, the Africa Corps war without hate story was another myth, for Rommel's men did some very dark things in the name of the National Socialist State, sullying forever the myth that the war in North Africa was a clean, unpolitical contest. Rommel's Africa Corps certainly fought a brilliant military campaign, but like German soldiers elsewhere in the world, war crimes were never far away. In the Italian colony of Libya lived some 40,000 Jews. The Italians largely let them be until the arrival of the Africa Corps to back up the failing Italian army that was staggering against the forces of the British Empire. Benito Mussolini was not particularly anti-Semitic until about 1938, though he became more so once fully in bed with Hitler. As the battles seesawed across the western desert, the Jews of Libya kept finding themselves under Italian, then British, and then Italian control. The British recruited a Jewish legion from among them, infuriating the Italians and the Germans. When German and Italian forces recaptured the region in 1942, the decision was taken by the Germans to send 2,600 Jews to Giardo concentration camp, 150 miles south of Tripoli. Conditions in the camp were horrendous, the Italian fascists in charge deliberately starving the prisoners. Typhus broke out, killing scores. Fortunately, advancing British forces liberated this camp in January 1943, finding that out of 2,600 inmates, 600 had died. In another appalling crime, Africa Corps units expelled 2,000 Jews into the Libyan desert, where a fifth died in squalid camps. Elsewhere in Libya, under German advice, the Italians used 3,000 Jews for forced labour but it was the arrival and the baleful influence of a small SS unit operating under Africa Corps control that caused widespread suffering. 
SS Einsatzgruppe Afrika, commanded by SS Obersturmbannführer Walter Rauf, the SS officer responsible for the creation of mobile gas vans on the Eastern Front, was created in Tobruk in July 1942. It was tasked with following the advancing Africa Corps to extend the Holocaust from Europe into Egypt and then on into Palestine if Rommel was successful in penetrating into the British colony. Ralph's unit only comprised 24 SS officers and men and so was heavily reliant on Africa Corps units for muscle. For example, in November 1942, following Rommel's capture of Benghazi, a pogrom was organized by SS Einsatzgruppe Afrika, through which Afrika Corps soldiers killed 67 Jewish civilians in cold blood, as well as ransacking their properties, homes and businesses throughout the Jewish quarter of the city. The SS organized male Jews into work parties to build defensive positions for the Africa Corps, treating their slaves with the kind of brutality seen in Eastern Europe. It has been estimated that the Africa Corps killed around 500 Jews of various nationalities that they caught in British Army uniforms, serving in the Pioneer Corps or other units, including Libyan Jewish volunteers and Austrian and German Jews. Fortunately for the people of Palestine, Rommel's advance east was stopped at the Second Battle of El Alamein. Thereafter, the Africa Corps retreated west, ending up in Tunisia, where Africa Corps troops plundered Jewish homes and businesses. They also created a Jewish council, a Judenrat, similar to those in the European ghettos, and the SS extorted 90 million francs out of the Jewish population. Obersturmbannführer Rauf was also responsible for plundering Jewish gold, what became known as Rommel's gold, which was shipped to Europe but disappeared at some point during transit and was never seen again. Africa Corps troops also stole from Arab communities. There were many incidences of rape committed against Muslim women. Plunder and ill-treatment of Arabs and Berbers was well documented, in addition to the Jewish experience. The question posed by all of this is obvious. Did Rommel know what was going on? It seems likely that he did, but turned a blind eye to his men's excesses. Certainly, one Africa Corps officer was on Ralph's staff and was reporting directly to Rommel's headquarters. Probably, Rommel was sensible enough not to interfere with Himmler's man in Africa. It was seen as very unwise for any army general to pick a fight with Himmler. But it's also not beyond the realms of possibility that had Rommel survived the war, he may very well have been put on trial alongside other German generals regarding the Africa Corps' behaviour, as regardless of his brilliance as a military commander and his decency as a human being, he bore command responsibility for the crimes committed by the Africa Corps, not to mention the extensive later use of slave and forced labour in the construction of Atlantic Wall defences, some of which came under his responsibility in 1944 in the months before D-Day. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share and also visit my audiobook channel War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.